Hey guys, welcome to the pod. The pea pod. I'm Peas. And I'm Ladle. And we have a full ladle of peas just for you. So let's get to it. Uh, good afternoon. I would like to talk to you about something that is urgently happening. This is our last episode for the semester. Now, that means this is also the end of season two of The Ladle of Peace. Mm -hmm. We are very excited for what is to come in the future. And we have big plans for some changes and some fun things for you for next semester. But that also means that we have three long months away from you. Um, because back home, we don't really have time as much capability or access to places such as this. So, uh, we will probably do a midsummer special of some sort that might just be us filming on iPhones. Who knows? (laughs) But until then, uh, this is our last episode and... We're going to be in 1 Kings today for scripture, 1 Kings 18, and I will let Peas start. Okay, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 20 says this, and this is, uh, what are we, verse 20 to 40, yep, 20 verses. So Ahab sent to all the people of Israel and gathered the prophets together at Mar- Mount Carmel, and Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you go limping between two different options? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the, and the people did not answer him a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I, even I only, am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let two bulls be given to us and let them choose one bull for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood and put no fire on it. And I will prepare the other bowl and lay it on the wood and put no fire on it. And you can call upon the name of your God, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. And all the people answered, It is well spoken. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose for yourselves one bowl and prepare it first, for you are many, and call upon the name of your God and put no fire on it. And they took the bowl that was given them, and they prepared it and called upon the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O Baal, answer us. But there was no voice, and no one answered. And they limped around the altar that they had made. And at noon, Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud, for he is God. Either he is musing, either he is musing, or he is relieving himself, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. And they (laughs) cried aloud and cut themselves after their custom with swords and and lances until the blood gushed out upon them. And as midday passed, they raved on until the time of the offering of the oblation. Oblation? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But there was no voice. No one answered. No one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. And all the people came near to him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been thrown down. Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two seas of seed. Is that what that says? Seas? Mm -hmm. S-E-S-E-S of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bowl in pieces and laid it on the wood. And he said, fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering on the wood. And he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. And the water ran around the altar and filled the trench also with water. And at the time of the offering of the oblation, Elijah, the prophet, came near to God, or came near and said, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God. And you have turned their hearts back. And the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and all the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. 
And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said to him, to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Let none of them escape. And they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slaughtered them there. L. Dang. This passage is just such like a Elijah absolutely owning the prophets of Baal. It is, it is so... It makes me wonder oh, why. God, absolutely. Well, absolutely. I mean, like, it makes me wonder how people even, like, after this had any doubt or any problem with God. Like, this was... <laughs> Can you imagine standing there and watching that? I mean, it was it was literally a perfect test to say, okay, you say there's Baal, I say there's God. Let's see what happens when you call on Baal. And then he's like... Maybe he's in the bathroom. Like, yeah, maybe he's maybe relieving he's, himself. Maybe he's chilling out. Or he's out. on a journey. Maybe, maybe he's, he's asleep, asleep and <laughs> needs to be awakened. <laughs> and they're like, okay. And then they start cutting themselves and hurting themselves trying to get their attention. As is their custom. custom. And nothing happens. And then Elijah like totally shows him up and covers the whole thing in water so that it's not soaking once. wet. Not twice. But three times. Three whole times he covers the whole thing in water so it's soaking wet. And obviously... You know, something that's, like, covered in water is almost impossible to, yeah. to catch flame. Like, wet wood has a hard time catching flame. And just, like, this fire comes down from heaven and envelops the the, the, whole the offering, the rocks, the dust, the water, everything. There's just a crater there. And then they're like, oh, okay, we know he's God. And he's like, great, now go die. Glad you realized what you did wrong. It's your time to go. Yeah. It's just so <laughs> awesome to me. And, I mean, even after this, so, okay, so let's talk about context for a second, because this is a time when there's very little, like Elijah was saying, there's very little uh, prophets for God mm -hmm. left. He's one of the few. And we catch that in the next chapter, because that was chapter 18. Halfway through chapter 19 is that spot where he's standing in the mouth of the cave, mm -hmm. and the lightning, and Elijah says, I'm the last one. Help me. And God says, no, uh you're not the last one. I think we talked about that. Yeah. Um, and so this this comes right before that. And he is still, you can hear him. He's still, he had had that thought of, I'm one of the last ones left. And then that's when Jezebel goes after him and says, yeah, we should probably kill this guy. But anyway, uh, I just find this very impossible for me to understand how anybody else could have any doubts about God after seeing that. But I mean, we're humans and fallible. And we have, I mean, I have that problem all the time where the Lord's done something in my life very, very clearly. And then a week later, I'm like, Lord, are you even there? Do you even exist? Are you there, God? <laughs> exactly. That's for Shrek the Musical. No, I just wanted you to know that. Yeah. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what I think is interesting, the word that you were tripping over, uh, ablation, I looked it up, and it means an offering to God. But... <laughs> In the time of the offering, of the offering to God. <laughs> is that what it says? Where, where is that in the... Verse 29. Verse 29. As the midday passed, they raved on until there was the time of the offering of the oblation, but there was no voice, no one answered, no one paid attention. As midday passed, they raved on until the time of the offering, of the offering to God. <laughs> uh, the offering of the offering. Are if there any other words that that means? Any other uh, context or anything? Sure. What was the other word that I had? The something of the seeds, the sea of the seeds. Say. 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 Oh, oh, I'm dumb. It's in a. It's the footnote. Measuring rate system. Yeah, there's a there's a footnote here that says a say was about a unit seven of dry quarts. measurement of ancient origin found in the Bible and in Halakha, the Jewish law. It says it's about which seven. Which equals quarts. one third of an ephah, ephah. or ephah. ephah, or bath. 7.3 liters. So that's like... Three says of flour and a half. is 18 liters, or almost five gallons. Oh. You fill a five-gallon bucket, three says. Say? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's a lot of water. That was just a, a, an explanation a of a lot of water. It'd be like if you if you literally to waterlogged... A, uh, you know, a bundle of I mean, of wood. he dug the trenches, and the trenches filled up, too. Yeah. So he knew. So he, that's what he wanted. He wanted everything to be soaking wet and then have the trenches be full of water, and then everything was burned up. I don't know. I love it. There's not a lot of... Um, I'm sure that we, if we had read commentaries or something on it, we didn't. Um, there's a lot of um, 
spiritual application to this. Mm -hmm. We could hermeneutics our way through it pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, But I just like to see it as an incredible story of the Lord proving himself. Not not that he needs to prove himself. For those of you who don't know what hermeneutics is, it's just Bible study methods. Well, it's a little bit more specific than that. Well, Hermen- gener- hermeneutics generalized. is just it's the study of the word specifically like in 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 intense ways methods methods some would say okay well <laughs> i just uh, okay you're probably right i just think of it as a more specific the class is called hermeneutics colon bible study methods oh that's not what mine was called mine was just called hermeneutics period <laughs> eric redman <laughs> but anyway i just I don't know. Do you have any uh, things you want to extrapolate here? No, I just... Lessons, methods? I think Elijah is one of my favorite people in the Old Testament to follow. And Elisha after that as well. Because, oh, here's a fun fact that I learned while I was writing my paper. Yeah, talk about it. Um, So when Elisha starts like accompanying Elijah around and stuff, Elijah finds him and God's like, here... Here's a kid. <laughs> He's going to follow you and someday be your successor. And he kind of is like really annoyed with Elisha. And he actually doesn't really want him around. And you can see that in a few <laughs> different points. In like scripture. Shrek and Donkey? Yeah, kind of. And like, <laughs> and like he cares for him, you know? Like he is fond of him, but he's also like, go away. <laughs> That's so funny. I didn't know that. And I didn't realize there's, that. I can't remember the exact uh, scripture passages that dr coakley pointed out but uh there was a few and like when he is like oh can i go kiss my mother and father goodbye he's like what have i done to you like i don't care (laughs) and he's like and he's like great but the point so the point was for him to be like no like what and elisha was just like oh Really? Okay. And then he runs back and goes and does it and comes back. And Elijah's like, what? What? You were supposed to pick up on some context clues here, bud. <laughs> and then the other thing is, is when right before Eli- Elijah ascends into heaven. In his chariot. In his chariot. Uh, he knows that it's going to happen. And everybody knows that it's going to happen. For I, I haven't looked into that. But there's like people that are like... They walk up to Elisha and they're like, oh, don't you know that your master's going to heaven today? And he's like, yeah, so shut up. He, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I remember you <laughs> he literally me says, that yes, so yes. be quiet. Yes, <laughs> so be quiet. That's what he said. <laughs> and uh, then Elijah's like, okay, I have to go now. And Elisha's like, wherever you go, I'll follow you. And he's like, bro. And then he's like, okay, we got to this place. So I got to go now. And Elisha's like, wherever you go, I'll follow you. And he's like, if I see you ascend into heaven, will I get double the portion of your spirit? And Elijah's like, you know what? Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Fine. I don't care at this point. (laughs) Like, there's definitely more thought behind it than that. But um, he's like, yeah. And uh, eventually, Elisha does, in fact, see him ascend into heaven. And so he gets double the portion of Elijah's spirit. But here's the thing. In Elijah's time, he performed eight miracles. In Elisha's time, he performed 16. That's a double portion. That is That's a double what that, portion. Yeah, what is it? Um, I was like, I learned that and I went. <laughs> That's what I think of every time I, I go like, to take true. communion and one piece of bread sticks to another. So I have two pieces of bread and then I'm like, <laughs> oh, and I just kind of hold it in my hand like I've got one. And then I, when they say eat it, I go. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, then, but the, usually the pastor knows, knows it. So I go to him and I was like. Since I got two pieces of bread, does that mean I get double portion? He goes, shh, don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'll keep, I'll keep it a secret. <laughs> I'll keep it a secret. I'll keep it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Put it after he takes communion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find that part where he says, yeah, so be quiet. But, uh, uh, it's in Second Kings chapter 1. Oh, it's in one? Because in two, that's when he goes to heaven. And Elijah keeps saying, please stay here for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. As the Lord lives, as yourself, I will not leave you. Mm. And then it says, please stay here for the Lord sent me to Jordan. Yeah. Um, and they oh, cross, yeah. And they shall do for you. Second Kings 2, verse 3. Oh. Uh, yes, I know, Elisha replied. So be quiet. Yes, I know. Keep quiet. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then, and then he's like, stay here, Elisha. The Lord sent me to Jericho. And he's like, wherever you go, I go. And then he's like, okay. And then they say it to him again. Uh, Elisha, the people went up uh, in Jericho to Elisha and asked him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know. So be quiet. He says it twice. Mm. Mm. Double portion. Mm. 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 Two mm-hmm. she bears. Mm. 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 <laughs> but anyway. And then there was a bunch of boys, a bunch, a bunch of, of men that said, that said, go up, you bald head, go up, you bald head. We listened to some audio dramas of that in class. You did? <laughs> it was so funny because he was like, listen to this. And it was just like a flat reading of like, go up, you bald head, go up, you bald head and like whatever yeah. and then it was like the dramatized one was like go up you bald head and it was like these ki- like a bunch like, of 13 year olds go up you bald head <laughs> that's what it sounded like <laughs> you so sound like a fifth grade boy you a fourth grade a boy. fourth grade boy you i should have gone out for that role <laughs> <laughs> that was not an insult by the way my uh i had an opportunity to be uh, an audio in, in some sort of audio production and, and my role was going to be a fourth grade boy and my mother was convinced she could do it and yeah she came up to me one day and she said tell me how my fourth grade boy impression is and she did she said something and i was like that's actually pretty good <laughs> <laughs> that's because she's had two fourth grade boys yeah and she's watched caillou so but mommy rosie stole my dinosaur Shut up, kid. Nobody cares. <laughs> anyway, there's so many. I wish that maybe kicking off season two, we'll talk about Second Kings uh, and the boys and the bears because I have, like, I wrote a paper on it, so I know a thing or two because mm. I've seen a thing or two. Bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. Um, but we might get copyright striked for that. Sorry. I forgot that. No, you did it wrong, so it's okay. Why? You a did the rhythm key? wrong. No, it was the rhythm. You just did it bum, wrong. Bum, 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 bum. That's not it. I'll tell you later. We are farmers. Bum, bada, bum, 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 bum. No. Is that incorrect? Yes. What is it? I can't. Uh, we might get copyrighted. We're not going to get copyrighted. Tell me what it is. It's we are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. Bum, ba, dum, bum. Not no. bum, bum, ba, da, dum. Bum, 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 bum. No, there's no third. I don't care. <laughs> so... When Elijah gets taken up to heaven, that is um, in the chariots of fire. Uh, that's uh, you. Could, so when he steps on the chariot of fire, right? It <laughs> was a single Are you going like a step, this? right? One step. So you could say he was one step away from heaven, which reminds me of this song that I've been listening to recently. Um, it's by uh, Eric Clapton, and it's called... Uh, Oh, wouldn't you know it? It's called Heaven is One Step Away. I'm going to play a portion for you right now, just because I was thinking about it while we a were doing this. double portion? Yes, I'm going to play you a double portion right now, because it's a good song. Anyway, Russia may not be able to hear this episode because of that, but that's okay. They play this in a scene in Back to the Future. Um, I have been listening to my uh, vinyl uh, Back to the Future record, um, and this is just one of my favorite songs on the record, and because it, it's just such a fun little funky song. Um, and if I recall correctly, um, oh, you know what? It's at the end of the movie when he's coming back to 1985. And he, uh, Rhett is sitting on the bench, and it's right before he comes out of nowhere. Yeah. And then... (laughs) And then he goes, crazy drunk drivers, or crazy drunk driver. It's my brother Keenan's favorite line to quote in the whole movie. Anyway, so I love that song mostly because of the movie. Uh, but other than that, 
I am so very extremely excited to hear about the song that Ladle has. I'm going to actually talk about the song we sing in chapel this week uh, that you love. Jesus, we love you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Jesus, we love you. It's like a very mm-hmm. slow song, but oh, it's so like. Wait, can I play the, just the intro part? It's my favorite part. Oh, it's so good. Okay. That's what I think of whenever I hear the word cornerstone is that section. Anyway, great song. So glad I get to add that to the <laughs> the playlist. That's got to be one of my favorite uh, worship songs. Yeah. I had only heard it during Welcome Week when I was... Sarah did it? Well, yeah, but... Uh, what I'll do it. You keep talking. Lights. I'll fix the lights. Okay. Uh, we had done it... Well, Sarah had done it for uh, one of the freshman chapels and... Uh, I also led a freshman chapel, but it was not nearly as well put together <laughs> as that. So, and I thought we had done it more. And then we sang it the other day, and I was like, wow, that was so good. And that chapel was just that incredible. Was fantastic. That it was, was last chapel. It was one of the best oh, weird. Worship Wednesday weird. chapels we've had in a while. Yeah. And There's a lot of really great songs. Um, anyway, I was like, Wow, I feel like we do that one pretty often. He's like, we haven't done that one in so long. I was like, oh. And I'm like, I swear Sarah just did it. And she was like, oh, you mean during Welcome Week? And I was like, that's That was crazy. the beginning of the year, yeah. That's literally like so long ago. That's a good way to start and end the year. Yeah. Yeah. It, and so I was just, it was very, it's a good like, it's just a good worship song. I just like it a lot. And it's just and it's a it's a live. The only recording that there is of there, out there, wow, is a live version by Bethel and Paul McClure, McClure, yeah, McClure, yeah. Um, and it's this. Be- <laughs> if you watch the music video, that is of the recording. They're on this beautiful mountainside, and you can see it's like dusk. It's my favorite time of day, where the sky is just like this purplish gray almost. And then towards the horizon line, it's a little bit of a lighter pink. And they've got big lights, but it's like, it looks like it's a little bit of a chilly fall night. And they've got a group of people that are sitting there and they play. Oh, it's just beautiful. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. Anyway. It's amazing. It's a very good song. And it's well, a really good song to harmonize to because it's slow and the melody is easy and you can just yeah, fit it anywhere. Yeah. You can, I have figured out seventh harmonies and wow. everything else. But it's you so fun. Cool. It's a jazzy if you do it like that. Yes, it is. But anyway, that's my song. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> so... PJ asked us a question before we started recording today that we would like to answer for you all Mm -hmm. because it's probably a question that you've had at some point as well. So she asked, what is the difference between my... (laughs) I almost said major and minor. (laughs) No way. (laughs) Major and minor keys. And what makes it sharp and what makes it flat? So... (laughs) Your typical major scale has eight notes in it. And there's patterns to these notes. So you can get like a ton of different scales. And we talk, we didn't even get to all of them until Music Theory 4. So we're going to try and explain it to you in a much simpler version. But what in the world? It was world? an advertisement. <laughs> it was an advertisement on my app. <laughs> um, but to start... If you hear a major scale, you're going to hear sounds happy. Sounds yes. good. Okay. But a minor scale is simply 
a few notes change in it, but mainly in your in your chord, it's going to be from a major three, which I'll get into more in a minute, to a minor three. So you in your eight notes of your scale, in a major scale, so you have all these notes, your third and your fifth, all the way up to back to the eighth. And that's your chord. One, three, five, eight. Is your chord. So the one the third, the major third, and then the minor third technically. And then Yeah. That's a major that's chord. That's a major chord. So if you take the third of the major chord and you drop it down a half step that makes a minor chord. And it sounds sad. And if you play a minor scale, <laughs> but here's the thing about minor scales, is there's three different kinds of minor scales. That is what's called the natural minor, and that is what is most commonly used. So that's what we'll go with today. We won't get into the whole difference. So the difference between major and minor is primarily that the third is dropped. Mm -hmm. That interval. Um, do you have anything else to add to that? Um, no. No. I wish I had a real piano and at my phone here, but um, <laughs> that is so. When you like, if I if I played this, uh, PJ will quiz you. If I play this, ready? Yeah. Is that major or minor? Major. Yes. Good job. Now, if I play this, oh, minor. yes. Yes. It sounds odd. It does. Major. Oh. You hear? This is the minor. And the ma major is, or, hear the difference? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, br that brings us to what you were saying about flats and sharps. Each, uh, if we think about a piano keyboard, like this one, uh, on the you you guys know what a piano looks like. Um, if you look at the, all the white keys, right? So if we start on, on C and go up to C, the, the C major scale, that's all the white keys. The black keys will adjust the pitch slightly in a sharp or flat tone, okay? So, for example, if we start on C, a C sharp would be up a, what's called a half step, right? That's this, the black note right above it. So this interval, that's a half step. And so if you go from C to C sharp, that's a half step interval. That's when you go up a half step. A full step, a whole step would be like from C to D. And then the half step is, you know the difference? Yeah. That's a sharp if you go up a half step. If you go down a half step, that is a flat. So if we start on E and you go down a half step, that's E flat. The tricky part is that when you come to notes that share a black note in between, so like this C and D have, have this in between, you can have it either be a C sharp or it can be a D flat. It's the same note, but it can be, it's Two called enharmonically spelled differently. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the scale that you're doing. If you're doing a D flat scale, then that note is a D flat. But and if you you're only have flats in the scale. Right. The, s the scale cannot consist of flats and sharps. I mean, it can, but that's different. It's one or the other, pretty much. In a major or minor scale, it's in one In common or the practice. Other. Common practice. There you go. You so either have, like, all, like, the key of A, for example, has three sharps. Oops. You will not have any flats in the A major scale, mm -hmm. though you could just call all the sharps flats. So it could be A, B, and instead of C sharp, it could be D flat. But the problem with that is then you would have double of one. Because then you go to D. 
after that. Yeah. So, so you'd have two Ds in your scale. Every scale has to have one note. So like A, B, C, D, E, one F, G, letter. A. It's got to have every single one of those letters in one of those forms. So you can't have it A, B, D B flat, flat, D, because then you're missing a C, right? And, and I'm, we could show you on a staff how that works too, because you have to have all those notes. But mm -hmm. um, just for your mind thinking about it, a sharp and flat, they have to be consistent. Yeah, and if somebody's singing and you're like, ooh, that's a little flat, we're not necessarily talking about that either. Right. Flat just so, means too low. Yeah. So your primary tone is in your pitch class. And where's my... That's a lot of words that I don't even know. I mean, I know conceptually, but how do you explain that? Well, here. Let's let this website describe. Cool. Make sure you... Uh, uh, Pressbooks. Pub slash open music theory that sounds slash chapter slash pitch and pitch class. Pitches are discrete tones with individual frequencies. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's the only thing I was going to say. So they each note has its own frequency. Mm -hmm. And if you're in between that note and another one, depending on what note you're trying to hit, you're either sharp or flat. Yeah. So So if I'm trying to sing a C, play a C. Mm -hmm. that's, that's flat. flat. Mm -hmm. You see how it's lower? She sounds like she's it sounds like she's doing mm -hmm. But I'm in, in between there. There's two notes. So it's flat. But so I'm not quite at either one. But it's lower than the C. But if we do And it's between the higher half step, that would be too sharp. Mm -hmm. Most people, I feel like, sing when they make a mistake, it's too flat because yeah. they can't shoot up there. So like like with the Jesus, we love you, we say, Jesus, we love you. Like that's, that's flat. flat. So when they say somebody has good pitch, does it mean that they can sing and the notes are they can not flat? They can match. Yeah. Yes, they have and, good pitch. And usually they'll be like, ooh, they're really on top of their pitch, meaning they're like getting to it so if they're singing really high and they're on top of the pitch it doesn't mean that they're sharp it means that they're actually hitting it and they're in tune is another yeah. way to say that um but you in terms of an instrument you hear that most often with instruments that have to be that are not like a trombone doesn't have like slots in it or a violin doesn't have frets like a guitar does and so you have to be able to understand where those notes are on each uh, I mean, string, depending on what it is. Um, a, a clarinet can be flat as well, or a flute can be flat, but that's slightly different because the, it's the way the instrument is built that can, you can do. Most yeah. of the time, you can hit a note easy every single time because they're switches, they're buttons, mm -hmm. um, or valves, I guess, is what they're technically yeah, called. Yeah, but also certain notes on different instruments are harder to get in tune. Right. So even if my C and E are in tune on my clarinet, if I try and go for a high high F, it's above my typical register, and it will almost always be really sharp. So you have to adjust your embouchure to get it to be flat. But then you have to make sure that you readjust when you go back. Huh? What's embouchure? Embouchure is like your uh, facial positioning. Right. Some people don't under know that. Like, Take the French horn, for example. It's only got three valves on it but they get to play every single note. So how do they do that? Well, it's the way that you move your tongue and your mouth and you can like if you can press one button and play like six different notes in different octaves. And it that's I feel like more complicated than my violin where I just press the note that I want. I don't have to the only the only factor I have to change is my fingers. And when you're playing a wind instrument, you can change the note you have by just your mouth. So if you think like a, of a bugle, it doesn't have any switches or buttons or valves on it. You just have a pipe, and then you go boop, 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 boop. Uh-oh, I got an email. Boop, 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 boop. And that depends on your mouth, your diction, your... I guess diction would be singing, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's on major, minor, and pitch class. Right. Period. Serial. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> we have to flow. 
<laughs> Good. Good. Um, Music was a big part of my childhood. Yes. Also, morning breakfasts were a big part of my childhood. Yes. And I ha- was very particular about my cereal. Mm. Specifically. Mm-hmm. Did and you have cereal every morning? No. I I don't remember a lot of mornings where I even had breakfast, but that was like by choice. But when I was young, my parents would have me eat breakfast. So, and it would usually be cereal or, you know, Pop-Tarts or toaster strudels or something. Mm. So, but I would always usually turn choose an alternative to cereal. But if I had to choose a cereal, um, it was always the really unhealthy ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> agree. Yeah, like Apple Jacks, I really mm-hmm. liked. Did you ever play the games? Yes. Okay, those were serious nostalgia for me. Apple Jacks, I liked a lot. I liked Cookie Crisps. Original which are or the Aldi brand? No, 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 the original. Oh. The I Aldi brand stuff? Ooh. She just put a thumb down. That's not good. Why? Aldi brand stuff is way better. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, it is. Unless it's Captain Crunch, Aldi brand. Captain I don't Cr- want it. They don't have. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They have a Captain Crunch. Yeah, they do, but it's not called Captain Crunch. No, it's off brand. Yeah. That's what I like. It's so it's much cheaper and better. The Aldi brand one is much better for Captain Crunch. Look, for a long time, I've had Aldi brand. I form. am just a Aldi hater. Oh, why? <laughs> because everything's so cheap and. No, no, no. It's great prices for great stuff. No, We've some never... of it's not great stuff, though. What are you buying from Aldi that's bad? Have you ever been down the aisle of shame? All of them. I've been down all the aisles. I've memorized The them. aisle of shame? Do you know what you I'm talking about? You mean the clearance about? stuff? No. I'm talking about the stuff that's not food. That's all the lovely little things that you want Trinkets to buy. Things, yeah. Yes. The Isle of Shame. It's not the... Uh, look. That's what Jessica single- calls it. She's she's uh, in a Facebook group called the, uh, all the Isle of Shame. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. Everything we've ever bought from Aldi has been in fantastic price and great product. Except for... Maybe the maybe the uh, the little gazebo that we bought for the grill that lasted t- actually lasted like our two or three years. Our pergola that we have in our lawn is like the we what? had to reroute all the screw things. We the had what? to. Uh, it's like a gazebo sort of thing, but the, all the screws were the wrong size screws for this thing, and so we had to go and pile it out with like this little like. Tapper? Yeah, that's what it's called. I'm so sorry. You should have talked to the Aldi will give you your <coughs> money back. They'll give you a new product. It's like yeah, a twice as nice guarantee. It done. I know, twice as nice guarantee. But you you get your money back and you get a new and product. And their salsa is bad. Oh, why are you buying salsa? Actually, we buy salsa all the time and they love it. I don't eat it because salsa spicy. I just am not an Aldi fan. I've had uh. a lot of like like the Aldi Cheez Its are so bad. Oh, uh. Don't I don't really eat them that much. They're not good. You've been spoiled. <laughs> no, my family would buy the Aldi stuff, and then I'd go to my friends' houses. There it is. And they were rich, <laughs> and so I just don't they like would have all the nice stuff, stuff anymore. And so I would want the name brand, and I'd be like, "Mom, can we please get the real cheese its this time?" And she'd go, "Are they at Aldi?" And I'd go, "No." She goes, "Then no." I mean, she said it much nicer than that. Probably, I can appre- but <laughs> I can appreciate name brand stuff. I will eat it. But like, we don't we don't even have name brand stuff here. We have s- marshmallow stars and uh, sugar squares and like f- fruity loopies or something like that. Like, I like the Apple Jacks off brand. I love those cereals. I I love Frosted Flakes is my favorite cereal. Um, but Which the is Frosted crazy Flakes from, because from Frosted Flakes are the most bland cereal to ever exist. You are such. Who are you? You, <laughs> they have no flavor. No wonder you like them. <laughs> I don't understand. What? What are you talking and about? Cheerios. Honey nut Cheerios. No. Honey nut che- Cheerios no. itself. I will not eat without. Cheerios honey. are bad. Honey nut Cheerios good. are bad. Honey nut Cheerios are good. All kinds of Cheerios are bad. No. The normal Cheerios are and bland. And the only way to make them good is to add honey and sugar into your cereal. <sighs> you are hurting me. I just, I have strong You're opinions about my cereal. going down a path that I cannot follow. 
I'm so sorry that you had such a bad experience. You gotta <gasps> come to my. Yesterday in Target, I saw fruity pebbles that were springtime fruity pebbles that are pastel colors Why instead are they of still in business. Because fruity pebbles are good. Fruity pebbles, are good. cocoa pebbles, yum. <laughs> the cocoa rice is good from Aldi. Cocoa yeah. rice. <laughs> is not real bro i had cocoa rice for cocoa pebbles i had cocoa pebbles. rice for months every single morning chocolate milk after you have a chocolate cereal are you kidding me that's the bomb count com. chocula you ever had that one yes we did have those because that, that was the chocolate one there was a blue one and there was a red one yeah i had those but those listen, were good if you take normal rice have you ever had things? crave yes it's not good. oh my gosh those are good i like those a lot we haven't had those in, in a long time. I don't special know. Special K? I don't have Special K strawberries. strawberries. I like That's them. one of my favorite cereals, period. I do like that one. What about period. Yogurt. If you like the strawberries, you like the fruit and yogurt. Uh, yeah. Mm. My mom is one of those people that does like the cereal or the oats in her, you know, her yogurt, whatever. Well, no. This Special K makes one called fruit. Fruit Do you put yogurt. the, do you just like, is it one of those things no, where you tip it in? No, it has, it has like it's yogurt. Cereal, um, but it's got yogurt. Like huh? clusters. They're yeah. like pieces. Oh yes. I have had those. I can't say that I love them, but Yeah, but I like the special K with strawberries in it. Okay. Okay. That's something we can agree on. Boom. Aww. We agree on that one. That thing. one. Uh what other cereals do you like? <gasps> I like Rice Krispies if you put honey in it. Because oh, it sticks oh. to the honey. I just ate that for dinner. Rice Krispies really? are mm-hmm. Bland-ish, but they yeah, you but can't you put, put honey, honey on Rice Krispies. Yes, you can. Jess and I used They're to do it every morning. They're too soft and tiny. If, if Did you ever have the tiny cereal boxes? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. The camper we used to have. The camper, the, the, the J, the, uh, oh no. Uh, the, 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 the camper we used to have. Whenever we'd go camping, we would have those mini boxes of cereal. Those were the best. Bring back the ones Frosted where you Flakes. Could- <laughs> Those were no. the best. We had little bowls. <laughs> no. We had little plastic bowls that had straws built into them so that when you were done, you could drink the milk straight from You could never you were one of all the milk out of those straws. Well, like, yeah. You, you would just you were just drinking goldy milk. What? Because you can never you get, get it clean. You can't get them clean. What happens when you put water down it? There's still a film left over. You mm-hmm. guys are weird. We no, cleaned them true. out fine. Anyway, but the little boxes, but the old, old ones that you could peel back and then just pour milk right into the box. What? I've never seen that or heard of that. PJ, do you know what I'm talking about? I do. Yeah. All I had was literally, literally miniature cereal boxes where you pull the plastic out, you open no, it, and you dump no, it in your no. bowl. No, no, no. Before that. On what planet do you put a milk in a cardboard no. box? No. They were, on the inside, there was a, like a foil yeah, was coating foil. so it wouldn't leak out and you would just... Pop the top, like the big part of the box off the top, I peel it back, pour milk right into it. And there was a bag, I think, maybe inside, too. I don't, I don't recall I there being a bag, but there might have been. But that was, like, the thing. It was, like, they were in the tiny box, and you didn't need a bowl. <sighs> Bring heard back that. those boxes, bro. Like, hold on. Let me see if I can look this up fun a picture. I've never heard of that. Can we put a picture up on the thing? If I do this, ta-da! Yeah. If we find the picture. Sure, I'll try. Wait, here's the one that she's talking about. Yeah. Here's the one that I'm talking about. Yeah. And then here is the bowl that I would use. <laughs> it's very cool. We're gonna have to remember that so I don't look stupid and just have my hands open. No, I'm gonna keep it. The same. Okay, great. Um, it, I'm gonna put like. <laughs> yeah, I eat. I eat out of King Tut's bowl. King Tut's like uh, hand washing bowl or something. The ones you're thinking of are like these, but this is how you're supposed to do it, right here. You're supposed to take the plastic and cut it open. Like no, so. that's insane. That's just crazy. Because then, okay, that's saying that when you have a big box of cereal, you're supposed to open the box. And no, pour it into the bag. The big box is the same servings. thing. This is to save you from having a bowl. That's the point of the little boxes. I don't think so. But we have those oh, at, d- at d- breakfast at night. Vintage. 
Ah. Cutie. Cool. Um, we would ha- we have those at breakfast at night. They put them on the table yeah, sometimes. But yeah, they do have them at breakfast at night, and they always build a tower out of them, and somebody always knocks it down, and it's usually Reef. I have a I have a, a box uh, left over um, from one time I had them in my closet right now. And then what has become of it? These. Yeah, the bowls, the little like plastic bowls. The bowls are weird, I dog. Them. We have them at camp a lot. I often had that- honey. Um, <laughs> I often had. <laughs> Honey gram. <laughs> I also have honey. Honey gram. Honey, honey gram. Yeah. Grams. Oh, those were good. Honey gram. Golden grams. Golden grams. That's what it was. My mother loves golden grams as well. Mm. My dad would just eat a bowl of rocks most mornings because everything. Cocoa else. pebble. Cocoa. Cr- no. What are they called? Cocoa. Crispies. Rice. Cocoa rice. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm talking about the big ball ones. Cocoa I'm thinking puffs. of the cookies. How about the cookie cocoa craves? Puffs. Cuckoo crazy for cocoa puffs or whatever. That's yeah, crazy for cocoa puffs. Yeah. Love Have you things. seen the Liam Neeson thing uh from uh Ted, that movie that you should never watch? There's a shot where Liam Neeson buys this fruity pebbles and he goes up to him and he goes, or no, tricks, and he goes, This box of cereal says it's is explicitly for for children. Is that correct? And Ted's like, well, I mean, yeah, that's what the commercials say. And he goes, is there going to be any trouble if I buy this box of tricks? And Ted's like, no, you're fine. He goes, okay, is anybody else here? And he's like, no, it's just you. And he goes, okay, I'd like to purchase them now. And then he <laughs> walks off with it. And Liam Neeson's voice is so fun and deep. Don't hold it up in front of your face. Thanks a lot. Come again. Yeah. Oh, dear. Will you get in trouble for saying that? I don't Probably. Know. Hey. Russia won't be able to listen. Hello. I'd uh, like to ask a few questions about this <laughs> box of cereal. Uh, yeah. Yeah, box of tricks. That's right. I've been led to understand that tricks are exclusively for children. Is that correct? Well, I, I mean, they say... Uh, Tricks are for kids in the commercials. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And is that enforced by law? <laughs> uh, not to my knowledge, no. So if I purchase these tricks, there'll be no trouble. No, no, you, 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 sh- you should be fine. You do understand that I myself am not a child. I, I was able to sniff that out. Yeah. Oh, Peter. Okay, I'm going to bring these back to my apartment. I uh, yeah yeah you'll you'll be okay. And, uh, I won't be followed. Uh, no, that's that's not in our budget here. And then he pays for him, which is so funny because he's the guy, you know, I will find you and I will kill you, <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, anyway, don't watch that movie or look it up. No, it's bad. It's bad. I haven't seen it, but I know that it's bad. It's not even from Ted. I'm not going to tell you what movie it's from, but. Wow. Well. Anyway. I guess for legal reasons, I should say it's from Ted too. But oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a, bruh. Uh, uh, tricks were bad. I never really had tricks. I had the tricks yogurt. The tricks yogurt. That Delicious. was pretty good. The animals. The animals. Crush cups. <gasps> crush cups. My mom would never I let me have like them. Crush cups. My mom would never let me have them. And then I had a birthday party in my first in first grade one time, mm-hmm. and I was allowed to have them. And I remember being like. <laughs> Ah, my mom was standing behind me, and I was like, see, I'm crushing the cup. And she's like, just get a spoon. And I was like, no. And then uh, the teacher was like, yeah, this is dumb. And I was like, I know. No, I had I had a few crushed cups in my day. Oh, and then I would eat pudding like a crushed cup when I was in high school. Just get a spoon. Or use the lid. I didn't have a spoon, and my friend Colton would bring me, put it, he'd have his mom pack him two pudding cups and give me one. Hmm. And well, she knew that I was getting one anyway, but she would send an extra one for me. And oh, nice! Yeah, it was very nice. And so I would have this pudding every day, but I would always forget to. Sp- I I would never had a spoon, and my cafeteria didn't have spoons that you could get. Oh, we so had a old spoon dispenser. Oh, we didn't. Kachunk. Because uh, my school's not rich, so. This is true. And. Womp womp. So I we didn't have spoons in the cafeteria. So, and nobody, I, I, I wasn't going to just walk around with a spoon all day. And <laughs> uh, so I would just like. 
Wow. And people would be like, ew, you can't eat it like that. Speaking no, of danimals. Like, yes, I can. Ah. Um, I, my buddy Andrew would always have danimals, but sometimes he just wouldn't want them. But he would hate that I always take the top all the way off because Andrew would just kind of rip it just to the edge so that you mm-hmm. could throw it all the way at once. I take the tops off of everything. No, I would only peel it back. Yeah, that's edge. weird. So <laughs> I had my favorite, one of my favorite Calvin Klein zip ups. I was, uh, I ripped it just to the edge and then I went to lick the lid because I always lick the lid, but I forgot that it was open. And so I dumped mm-hmm. it all down the front of myself. And I, to this day, still have a yogurt stain in the zipper. Wow. Yep. It was not fun. tough But I used to love animals. I wish they were bigger. Remember uh, Zach and Cody? They had those commercials where they would put... I never watched Zach and Cody. Oh. But you know the Danimals commercials with the guy? Oh. What's so great about Danimals? Why don't ju- you just get like... They're little smoothie Activia, things. Activia, like yogurt. Like well, like Activia like, has a little bit like of a the adult sour. Version. It's just not as fun, you know? You don't have like a little monkey going like... Ah. Yeah, <laughs> they're not quite as sweet. You don't have like a skater monkey on the front of the bottle. Yeah, you know? this is true. Yeah. Not as bright of colors. As Activia fun, yeah. is promoting like healthiness. Animals is like you're a rad little kid. Gotcha. Glug glug glug. Marketing. Yeah. That's true. Red. Marketing. Yeah. Red monkey. Red monkey. <laughs> Red monkey. <laughs> Shout out to my dad who taught me how to do that. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Except my dad will go crazy. He'll go. <laughs> and he'll Stop. start going like crazy. Stop. <laughs> the fact that I know your dad just. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's just good at animal noises. It's really funny. He'll just go. <laughs> at random times, too. SpongeBob. That's really my funny. My dad can do it. <laughs> what? My dad can do. My dad can do the Cowardly Lion from. Oh, Wizard from Wizard of Oz? Yeah, because he sings that song about being king of the forest. It's like, Frost. I don't know how he does the thing with his... Oh, the brrr, rolling oh, the tongue? Yeah. Frost. My dad can do Chewbacca. Yeah, that. Where he wiggles his uvula. <laughs> he goes... I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. I can roll my tongue, but I can't do my uvula thing. Keenan oh. can do the uvula thing. Yeah. What's a uvula? The thing in the it's back the, of your throat that wiggles? That's thing. what the wiggles dangly. when you make that noise. Uh, oh, so you wiggle it. Yeah. It's like it's like one of those punching bag things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going... And it's like the air and your throat is like... Punching the bag, you know? Hey. <laughs> um, I think that uh, should do it today, so... See you. What? Oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Do your do your 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 little <laughs> you do your little outro. <laughs> Wait, I need a I need a I need to do a. Uh, well, guys, it has been a fantastic first two seasons. We can't wait for, hopefully, many more, and we will see you next time for another keeping, keeping healthy, healthy ladle of, of peace. Peace. Bye, guys. Thank you.